whenever I talk about foods that are rich in nutrients, it's amazing the number would say fruits and vegetables. It's amazing. Well, I mean, this is very simple. Let's just do a thought experiment. If you were only to eat plant foods and to not supplement it for 10 years, what would happen? Well, I, I guess people do survive. Uh, there's a degree of suffering. Well, you, you would become vitamin B12 deficient. Yep. Um, you'd probably become iron deficient because the reality is it doesn't matter how much spinach you have, the non-heme iron is not, bio not very bioavailable. Essentially, at best you would survive, but you certainly would not thrive. If you were to have a diet purely of animal foods for 10 years, what would happen to your health? Absolutely nothing. And this is incredibly surprising to people. Um, people don't realise that, and this is, there are people out there, I kid you not, who consume only a red meat diet. They're called carnivores. And there's cases of carnivores in America who have been doing it for over 30 years. And indeed, we've got ancestral populations who consume animal foods for long periods of time, like the Maasai. So, and they, you know, they either eat beef and drink milk and that's it in their diet. And they don't suffer from any nutritional deficiency. And the most common question I get about nutritional deficiencies is what about vitamin C? And this is a really interesting one. So when I went looking into it a couple of years ago, um, the first thing that struck me was on a low carbohydrate diet, the, ne the need for vitamin C is less. Vitamin C competes with sugar for absorption. So when you're having less glucose in the diet, um, you're not having that competitive inhibition of your vitamin C absorption. Number two, the recommended daily intake for vitamin C was set relatively higher than was uh, indicated by the evidence because it was thought that it was an antioxidant and that would be good for you. So we'll just encourage people to have more. And number three, despite common belief, meat actually does have vitamin C in it. So, and this is another case of where science is a little bit misleading. If you go back to some old books and you have a look at the tables of nutrients contained within meat, and I've seen examples of this, you'll see it'll have vitamin C, it'll have a zero with a little asterisk. Like, okay, what's the asterisk mean? And you go down and have a look at the bottom of the page and it says presumed to be zero. So yeah. a lot of those references assumed that there wasn't any vitamin C in meat, so they didn't bother to measure it. The simple fact is it's there and it's well known that it can both cure and prevent scurvy. So the explorers in the Antarctic used to eat penguins to manage their scurvy. Um, soldiers in the Napoleonic era, they used to, if they developed scurvy, they used to be fed raw horse meat from horses that had died in battle and that would cure their scurvy. So this has been long, well known for a long period of time. And with regards to the sailors, the problem was that they weren't, uh, you know, they were often on a diet after many, many months of dried biscuits and things like that. They certainly weren't getting any mm. meat in their diets there when on those long voyages. Um, so sure, you can get it from, from uh, plant foods, but it will be very surprising for people to know that there is actually vitamin C in meat. And there are, as I said, uh, as crazy as it sounds, there are these people who sustain themselves entirely on a meat-based diet um, in perfectly good health with, uh, with no documented deficiency. Thank you for really putting it there, that um, meat and protein, a whole meat, is, is certainly a whole meal, It's uh, if you like, a whole meal, uh, and that uh, long-term ingestion leads to no health issues. But there's a lot of issues with um, people consuming a pure plant diet where they need to supplement.